Good, hello, welcome to Onion Skin, a much more Zelda themed tutorial for you today, but it's going to incorporate all sorts of different kinds of tricks and techniques that are hidden within Toon Boom Harmony. This drawing phase of the project can be done in pretty well any vector program, so try not to be phased if you don't have access to Harmony. You should still be able to create the shape and the glimmer animation, just be missing out on the glow effects. On the most part, this will be applicable for Toon Boom Harmony Essentials and Advanced, but later on we'll be getting into some schnazzy wazzy effects stuff that will be more exclusive to those with Harmony Premium, as we will be spending a lot of our time within the Node Network view, but for everyone else we will be spending a decent chunk of time within the Drawing view. Now those who are not familiar with the Drawing view, it's very similar to the camera, you know, you draw in one, you can see the images appearing on the other. Uh, the difference is this one only focuses on the currently selected layer, so it allows you to be a bit more concentrated with the task at hand without being bogged down by the file as a whole. So you probably saw from the thumbnail and the introduction that we are indeed making a glistening, glistening rupee. Yeah. So we're going to be utilizing a few drawing tricks as well. So to start, I'm going to expand the drawing view for the whole screen. So I've got plenty of room to work with. Now, uh, selecting a rectangle square tool. It should be down here for for most of you. For me, I stashed it all the way up here because I'm, I'm silly. Holding Alt and Shift, drag out a square. You'll notice that it scales towards the center and indeed stays square-like. Just slap it in on there. No real reason to be precise just yet, but now select the black selection tool. Circle select that thing so it highlights orange. Hold the Shift key and hover over the corner of the shape. You'll get these rotating arrow things. Rotate it around until it locks in as more of a diamond shape. Get it in place, move it up towards the middle center of your working area. Copy and paste it. It will paste it down uh, a bit to the right and a bit down. So holding shift and the arrow keys, nudge it back so it is vertically aligned with the original. Very important. Now still with the black arrow selected, hover somewhere over the edges or the middle and you see the cursor turns to this four pointed arrow thing. Make sure it hasn't got the P in the middle that will move the pivot point, don't want that. But with the regular arrows, we can pick it up and start moving it around. Holding the shift key again, you'll see it will lock to a, you know, an alignment of something. Align it vertically, pull it down so that the two tips will be touching like so. I'm gonna scale mine down just to make it easier to look at, but again, it does not matter as we are working with vector art. Now press K on your keyboard. You'll notice blue lines start to appear throughout all of the shapes. This is the show vertices mode. We can see the vector elements that construct the shape. Selecting the line tool, if I slap a line down through it, you can see these boxes appearing. So using the show vector mode, I can see where lines are intersecting. So holding shift, draw two straight lines down the middle. We can see where the lines are indeed interconnecting. I want to line these up with the edges of the box. So by selecting these, move it across. So you see these two boxes start to become one, but do not disappear entirely. Do that for both sides. There we go. So a bit of a rupee shape is now starting to form. Select the cutter tool here and make sure in tool properties that it's tip style is set to the round version. Go around the edges and just slice through like that. Just quick whippy lines will trim the edges off. Do this also for the intersecting lines throughout the middle and the leftover chunk in the center. Now back with the black arrow selection tools, select everything on stage, copy, paste, line it back up with the original. Now holding option and shift once again so it stays conformed and scaling towards the center. Shrink it down to about here. This creates the more distinctive rupee shape that we are familiar with, with the gemstone surface in the center. But a misalignment has happened. These gaps here are bigger than these gaps here. I don't want that, I want them to be even. What I wanna do is use the shift key to draw this line and move it one increment snappy wappy up. Be sure that the top section is still intersecting and do that for all four corners. We can now see where these vertices are supposed to be connecting. So selecting now the white arrow selection tool, we are able to get to and manipulate the vertices on an individual level. Select the bottom half of this ring, make sure, see how I've dodged the ends of those straight lines. These vertices will now turn white and I can nudge them down 
to have their corners align perfectly with the intersecting lines. Do this with both the top and the bottom, and we should be left with something pretty dang on even. The only intersections left is one going straight down the middle. Once again, with the cutter tool in hand, go through and trim off all the edges on the outside and on the inside. We are now left with our true groupy shape. If this is our basis, we can do all sorts of cool stuff. We're gonna start layering up its color. So first things first, now that we are done with the line art itself, we're only going to be interacting with the fills. This line art will not be appearing in our final version. So select all of it with the black arrow and inside of tool properties, we can get to the stroke thickness, pull it all the way down to zero. As long as show strokes is still turned on, we will be able to see the structure of the shape, but with it turned off, it appears completely invisible unless we select something. Down here on the timeline, we have created this shape on frame one. Select a whole bunch of frames. I've selected 40. Right click and press extend exposure. This will fill all of that space in with this same drawing. Right click on the layer itself and go to duplicate selected layers and do this three times, leaving us with four duplicates of the same image. The four layers will be named thus. The bottom one is called base. The second one called tone. The third one, called Shine, and the final one simply called Backup. So if we stuff anything up, oh, it's still there. We won't need to worry about the backup one, so make that one invisible. It's simply there in case. Now it's time to build up the palette. Open the color panel if you haven't already. These are the default swatches. I'm going to get rid of all of them except for black and white. Delete. Create two more by pressing this plus button here. Open the first by double clicking this one will be called base. Hmm, I wonder why. The base tone is going to be of a dark green, specifically one with a red level of zero, green at 96, and blue at 13. And this is in fact going to be a gradient color, so change from solid to gradient. We're presented with these two handles here. Pull the left one across just a bit, that's enough. And now select the right hand one, which is still set to black. It's going to be a much lighter green, or more specifically, a red level of 129, green with 255, and a blue level of 37. Creating this nice, rich, dark green to lime-ish color. It's also a linear gradient currently, so change that to a radial. Double check that the darker end is towards the center. Our second swatch now, select that. This will be called Tone. It's gonna to be a very dark color with a red level of four, green of 28 and blue at zero. Creating this almost black color. Now tone is going to have four different variations. So with the tone swatch selected, press plus three more times, giving us four of them. Open up the first one again, and they're going to be gradually becoming more and more transparent. So the first one has an alpha level of 155 and change its name to tone one. Second, Notice because we duplicated it from tone one has all the same RGB parameters. It will be called tone two, of course, with an alpha level of 114. Tone three has an alpha level of 73. And finally, tone four has an alpha level of 22. The palette is now ready. Select the paint bucket, the base layer, and the base tone, and fill in each of the sections. I'm gonna show you a cool ability of the gradient tool. This has many uses, and this is a good place to show it. Now by default, filling with a gradient can be a bit irritating. See how it focuses the center towards wherever I click. What if you wanted all of these shapes to share the same point, which in this case we do? Well, first, select the gradient editing tool. Should be nestled under the white arrow selection tool. Select the middle shape here, and we get given some gradient transform controls. I'm gonna arrange it towards the middle of the shape and this corner piece here while holding shift allows me to scale it up and get it so the ring is just a bit bigger than the entire piece. Now to share it across the rest of the shapes is relatively simple. Now selecting it with the regular black arrow selection, in tool properties there is this button here. This is a save gradient feature. So if I click that, it looks like nothing's happened, but it has been stored. So now returning to the paint bucket again, there is a switch here with four little boxes. This is the use saved gradient. So switch that on, it will remain selected. And as I go through each of these here, they now all share the same gradient space. 
Now, up on the tone layer, select tone one and fill in the bottom left and top right spaces. It's like tone two, fill in the middle. Tone three, the two sides. And tone four, the bottom right and top left. So now you can see we are starting to get a bit more of a traditional gemstone shape. Finally, on the shine layer, we're gonna be able to create that shimmer animation. This is a really fun technique, very quick to do, and creates a really nice shine effect. To do this, along the layer, we need to duplicate the frame seven times. So right click along the timeline view, activate timeline view, so these controls appear. Press this button here, this is the duplicate drawing button. It will create a split along the timeline here, and do that across every frame seven times. Once that's done, go back to the first region of frames, copy one of those and paste it down one frame after the last split. This will restore the animation back to its first state. You can double check this by having a look down in the lower left area of the drawing view while scrubbing through the frames. And you should see it goes from shine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then flips back to one again the shine one image is going to be left blank. So going from number two and onwards, select the paint bucket and white and work your way along from the shine two state with bottom right, next frame, bottom left, next, right, next, middle, next, left, next, top right, next, top left. It will then go away and going through it, you can see it goes yeah. If you like, you can copy all of these frames here and paste them again somewhere along so you get a double shimmer shimmer. We are now done with our work within the drawing view and we can go back to the camera view to see how it all blends together. So flip back over to the camera view and here they are, all of the layers at once, going shling, shling. Wing, wing, wing. That's not how you ring. God! Turning the layers on and off, we can see how they all interact with one another the bass on its own and the tone on its own. The blend of gradient and blocky tones with a sharp shine creates a nice gemstone look. But we can take it even further. And this is where we get into the Harmony Premium stuff with the Node Network. That brings us to the end of the drawing phase. Next time we'll be going into all of the glow effects and trying to make this thing look as frizzazzy as possible. We'll be learning a bit more about how the Node Network and all of its systems tend to behave. There's a lot of fun to be had. Have a look at the annotations here, it might already be up and you can dive right in. Until then, have some fun and I'll see you in the next one.